read it in Jeremiah 32 and verse 27. I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? Father, one more time, we look unto you, Lord. Speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Is anything too hard for me? A direct question to you, a direct question to us, to me and to you. God says, ask the question. Is anything too hard for you? Is for you, Lord? Is anything too hard? The Bible says, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is that anything too hard for me? Yeah. One of the Tamil translations, when I read it, it was something different. The Tamil, one of the Tamil translations, I read in the way, it, it, it starts like calling by name. Jeremiah, oh Jeremiah, praise Lord, is it, is anything too hard for me? And the verse continues in that Tamil translation, you know very well that nothing is impossible for me. Jeremiah, you know very well that nothing is too hard for me. Even now, the same God speaks to me. Albert Solomon, do you know, you know very well that is nothing is impossible for you. Me, amen. The same word comes to you, my brother, my sister. Oh, dear beloved ones, God says, Nothing is too hard for the Lord, amen. Hallelujah. Turn around and say, Nothing is too hard for the Lord. Come on, tell it, Nothing too hard for the Lord, hallelujah. Is anything too hard for the Lord? We used to sing, Is anything too hard for the Lord? No, nothing is too hard for the Lord. Beautiful chorus. No. Come on, say no. Lifting hands. No. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. Amen. No, oh, there was a person. He met me in a, a railway station once. He said, after many, many, many years, he met me. He said, oh, pastor, it's nice to see you. I've been longing to see you. Uh, he said, he started saying, many things happened in my life. One thing, when he shared that, the reason I'm sharing this testimony with you right now, he used this word, Jeremiah 32, 27, said, once God spoke to you through this verse, that nothing is too hard for the Lord. That was the time, praise the Lord. He said, I was, uh, three things happened. This particular verse registered in my mind, nothing is too hard for the Lord. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. The world may say, my family may say, my relatives may say, my neighbors may say, the whole nation may say, it is not possible. But my God says, it is possible. Hallelujah. This word was registered in his mind. said, Pastor, three things happened in my life. God drew this verse. Oh, it's it's true. So I said, what is that? It's a three testimony. I said, we can make it very fast because three testimony. I said, I'm going to be very fast. It's a popcorn testimony. Praise He said, uh, I was praying for a government job. I was trying. I was writing exams. My age was like going on. It was 26, 28, 29. Still I was trying and trying and it was 30. Praise Lord. And start, people started to tell me, no brother, you will not get the job. You will not get the job. Better you go and join some other job. But one verse was ringing in his mind. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. Hallelujah. Just one verse was ringing in his mind. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. He said people, he said to the society, he said, told to the relatives and friends, yes, my no, my God, he is, nothing is true for the Lord. He will bless me with a government job. The same way he crossed 30, when people said it is impossible, when he believed that word and with all faith, when he confessed it, after 30, God blessed that brother with a government job. Hallelujah. Then I said, okay, brother, keep going. You said three testimonies, one is over. He said, after getting a job, I was looking for a girl partner, life partner. And I was deciding to have my life partner, this and this, this, way, this type of uh, uh, girl I need. He was praying, praying. He crossed 35. He crossed 35. People started telling to him, you crossed 35. You will not get a girl. Nowadays, uh, especially girls, daughters, when they touch 30, parents have a great, huh? what to say? They worry about them. Oh, my daughter touched 28, 29, 30. After 30, yeah, why, why? I don't know. So, 
serious looking me praise the lord this all happens in family right i want to encourage you this this man he waited all his people said you are a fool i said no i'm not asking something worldly i'm asking a god fearing girl nothing wrong in it i can wait for it i can wait for it he said it is possible it is possible with god yeah, i may be 35 i may be 36 it is time he makes everything beautiful am i hallelujah he said i was 36 and god blessed me with a beautiful life but said okay come on finish the third testimony he crossed 42 43 45 and he didn't have a child again people started saying doctors said it is not possible to have a child He, he didn't uh, worry about it because he know very well about his god amen the god who proved that even when he cry when i cross 30 god can bless me with a job even when i lord when my age was about 36 my god can bless me with a beautiful life partner why can't he bless me with a beautiful baby amen said it is possible nothing is too hard for the lord Come on, turn around and say, nothing is too hard for the Lord. Say them. You may not know. You may not. You are telling to the next person. You know. You may not know what they are going through. They are having something in mind. Your word will strengthen them. Tell them. Tell them. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. You know, this man, forty-five, forty-six. He said, "It is possible with the Lord." At the age of forty-five, forty-six. God blessed him with a beautiful son. Hallelujah! This morning I want to encourage you: nothing is too hard for the Lord. Is anything too hard for the Lord? No. Amen. Okay. In this chapter thirty-two, God raised a question: Is anything too hard for the Lord? The same God, when He come to chapter thirty-three. The God who said, "Is anything too hard?" He wants to prove something in chapter thirty-three, saying, "I will, I will, I can, I will do it." In chapter thirty-three, nearly three seven seven verses, we can read out in English Bible, "I will." I will none in Tamil says none. We are not going to meditate all the seven. Just one thing I'm going to share. We can turn your Bibles to Jeremiah 33 and verse three, and it's a very, 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 very known verse 33 and verse three. Praise Lord. Call to me, and I will answer you. See, you must understand my message. You have read this verse many times, right? This verse is as a sticker or a board in your house. Concentrate on the word. I will. Turn around and say, God will. God will. God will. I. God says, I will. Nothing is too hard, dear friends, dear brothers. You must know, I will. I can, or I will answer you. Amen. God says, I will answer you. I don't know. Yes, last night you would have prayed for something. Many of us may be praying for months. Some are praying for years. Some few, you cried even last night for something God to do, for your prayers to be answered. My message is simple today, but I felt it's a very needed word. God says, "My daughter, my son, I will answer you. I will answer you. I will answer you." You are asking within yourself, Lord, will it happen? Is it possible? People are saying it's not possible. Doctor says you will not have it. Doctor says you're going to die. Lord, is it possible? Can you change the things? That's why so during the worship, when we worship the Lord, when we call unto the Lord, God can change the things. Amen. Amen. Within the night, within the night, God can change the things. Amen. Turn around and say, within the night, within the night, even as you go home, as you go home this afternoon, this evening, tonight, you will see things have changed. Come on, if you believe, say Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Tell them things will change. Tell them things will change. You're not going to be saying things are going to change. I will answer you. God says I will answer you. This answer, I want to put it in the three ways 
according to the word of god according to the word of god what type of answer what kind of answer it's from god number 1 the answer it will be a definite answer number 2 the answer it's going to be a delightful answer and number 3 it's going to be a dreadful answer hallelujah number 1 it is a definite answer come on turn your bibles to isaiah 65 isaiah 65 verse 24 isaiah 65 and verse 24 and it shall come to pass that before they call i will answer while they are still speaking i will hear hallelujah i will answer i will hear this was proof that is answer is not a doubtful answer it is a definite answer hallelujah hallelujah for example if you go and meet an officer regarding a job or for your son's education or something okay that officer a principal whoever the boss he may say i'll try to do it you come tomorrow you come day after tomorrow or you come next month he never says i will most of the people say i'll try or you come next month this is the answer we get from the worldly people I may I try but our god is different from the men he says I will I will not say I may I will not say tomorrow I will answer you it is a definite answer hallelujah today you may be you're going through a bitterful life today you may be going through a bitterful life i tell you the bitterful present will become a blessed future the bitterful present the right now the bitterful present will become a blessed future turn around say bitterful present tell them tell them bitterful present will become a blessed future a blessed future amen i met her mother she said she called me for a prayer she said i lost my son uh when he was playing in the beach and I lost him the day Jan 29th Jan 29th I lost my son and the mother said Jan 29th is a black day for me so that's the day he she called me why can't you brother she's a elderly mother I said tambi why can't you come and conduct a prayer on Jan 29th we are in tears it's a black day so they I I just went to the house we had a prayer meeting it was jan 29th then after the prayer meeting he started praying he said my the other son elder son is not having child for more than 15 years so she said lot of prayer points uh, to be prayed that day when i started to pray for that mother when i started to pray for the mother god god spoke to me through genesis 24 verse 67 we not read it uh, uh, if you can read no problem ja- genesis 2467 it was a prophetical word to the mother when when i was praying for it ja- genesis 24 verse 67 isaac brought uh, her into the tent of his mother sarah uh, yeah and he married rebecca mm. so she became his wife his wife this the, the latter part of the verse says he loved her and isaac was comforted after his mother's isaac death. was comforted after his mother's death this line god spoke to her as a prophecy isaac was comforted after his mother's death said god said this black day jan 29th you're crying you say it's a black day my god going to change the things and he's going to comfort you i don't know what's going to happen i just prayed and left after a few months she called me the mother called me she said It's a good news Tambi what says my daughter in law after 15 years she got conceived oh praise god thank you praise the lord then after few months again she called me Tambi now only i understood what what what, what was the prophecy that day what happened said 
I was crying and crying and the Jan 29th, I used to cry a lot and I said it's a black day. You know what happened? As God spoke on Jan 29 to, 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 to forget all my agony and other thing, God blessed me with a grandson on the same Jan 29th. Hallelujah. Yes, God can change the things. Oh, he will make you to forget all the Past, parts you have gone through in your life that's why I'm telling you the pitiful present will become a blessed future hallelujah my God says it is a definite answer turn around say definite Tamil uh, definite uh, now, now when we when we talk to another person hey come here come home he will say hey definite I'll come here we are definite I'll be there you be used that word the same way God says definite I will answer you Turn, turn, tell them, tell them, definita, definita, my God will answer you. Amen. Tell them, he will not say, I try. He will not say, I may. He will do it. Amen. God can do it. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He is not a liar. He is not a liar. My God keeps his word. My God keeps his word. Yes. That the second one I said it's not only a definite answer it is a delightful answer when you receive the word when you receive his answer when you receive the answer the answer will give you joy the answer will make you delightful turn your Bibles to Psalm 91 and 15 verse 15 Psalm 91 and verse 15 he shall call upon me I will answer him. Answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. I will deliver him. And honor him. Listen, listen. You know this verse very well by heart. But understand, you must understand my message. The answer is a definite answer. That I told you. The second one is a delightful answer. Here the answer comes, right? The answer comes will be with you in trouble I will deliver him and honor him the delightful the blessing the answer is God says my child the answer you're going to receive that will that's going to honor you hallelujah hallelujah my God is going to honor you amen when God blessed Abraham he blessed his name blessed him and make him a blessed made him a blessing and honored his name God says I will honor you I will honor you among your family I'm in your a town or in your city where you're working people are talking against you people are against you or people are doing magics and many things and you're not able to praise the Lord walk upright praise the Lord all the time you put your head down and walk praise the Lord Psalm 3 3 says oh he's the lifter of my head he is the lifter of my head. The God will lift your head. Hallelujah. Where you are put down. Where you are ashamed. The same place. The answer is coming to you. The delightful answer is coming to you. What is that answer? My child. You are going to hear the news. The where you have been put shame to shame. Where you have been ashamed. The same place. My God is going to lift your head. I have gone through shame. Our chief pastor knows my life. I have gone through shame. I know people spoke behind me but I didn't leave my guard. I didn't give up in my life. I didn't give up in my life. I will keep on praising God. Devil thought, hey Albert Solomon, you're smiling all the time. We'll see how you will smile now. Many challenges I went through in my life. I was actually, actually not able to uh, walk uprightly I, I can say. You know, but one thing, I didn't give up. I just cling on to the God and God's promises. I tell you, wherever people thought it's his ministry is over, wherever people thought no more singing, no more worship, no more, we are going to see smile in Albert Solomon's face. Now I tell you, my God have honored me, honored me, blessed me before such people. I am praise the Lord, praising the Lord. I'm worshiping the Lord. I'm doing ministry even in these days. Double, double what I've been doing. Amen. I always say the more you are broken, the more you will be used. Amen. 
Turn and say, the more you are broken, the more you will be used. Amen. Hallelujah. So the, the delightful answers, number one, God says, I will honor you. Not only he will honor you, in Psalm 118, 118 and verse 5, verse 5 it says, In my anguish, mm, I cried to the Lord. I cried to the Lord. And he answered mm. by setting me free. The Lord answered me, set me in a large place. Hallelujah. He set me in a large place. Hallelujah. The delightful answer number two. Number one, it's a, you, will, you will be receiving an answer. Oh, that is God saying, my child, you will be receiving an answer. The day, praise Lord, you will know that you have been honored. And secondly, God says, I will put you in a larger place. Pastor was telling, like he, he came to Bangalore with nothing. The day one, how it was, and how God blessed the FGAG family, and He has extended the borders of the ministry the same way. The same way God will make your place larger. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And thirdly, and one more uh, thing, the delightful answer is in Exodus 15 and verse 25. I'm going to pray now. Exodus 15 and verse 25. Can you read it out, Pastor? Exodus 15 and verse 25. Yes. He cried out. So he cried out to the Lord. Mm. And the Lord showed him a tree. Tree. When he cast it into the waters, when he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. The waters were made sweet. There he made a statue. Okay, okay, it's okay. The waters were made sweet when he cried. Moses cried unto the Lord. Moses called unto the Lord because the water was pitiful. You know the story. God answered him. He received the answer. What type of, what kind of answer it is? It is a delightful answer. What happened? The bitterness became sweet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many of us, many of our families, you know, we, we look beautiful outside. Like, if, 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 I, if I see from here, I can't see anyone having worries. I can tell you, you are so blessed. Yes, of course, we have sung, I am blessed, I am healed, I am fine. But reality is, many of us not enjoying our life, the pitiful path you are going through, a lonely path. Even husband wife relationship, many of our families, just for the society's sake, they come out. Even when husband wife walk together, they don't hold the hands. No, just for people to see that we are fine. In a room, in by 10 by 10, room or whatever room, there will be one corner, the one family member, the other family in another corner. They will not have the family prayer. There will, there will not be um, was a gathering together. They really they don't enjoy the life. Even uh, our child, our, maybe our daughter got married and s due to family issues, maybe should have come back home. The whole house in mess, a beautiful path you may be going through. Maybe in your office, in your family, a pitiful path, a pitiful experience. God says, my child, I'm going to answer you. It's not only a definite answer. It's going to be a delightful answer. The delightful answer carries three blessings. One, I'm going to honor you. Number two, God says, I will enlarge your place. And number three, three I says, God says, I will make your bitterness into sweet. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the third D is dreadful answer. I'm not going to read it out. I'm going to give it to the pastor. It's three things I told. I will answer you. I said definite answer. Delightful answer. And the third one is a dreadful answer. That you can read it. You can note it on and read it out later. It's in Exodus 19 verse 18 and 19. Praise the Lord. Uh, there Moses, when he prayed in the Mount Sinai, things were so dreadful. God came down with clouds and there was something different happened when Moses prayed. So I call it as a dreadful answer. What I'm trying to say in this verse, see we are praying for our nation, right? We are praying for our nation. Things are not so comfortable, we know. My God is so quiet. My God is so quiet. 
I tell you, the time is coming. He will going to rise up. My God is going to rise up. Amen. And when God rises, enemies will be scattered. Hallelujah. I want to say one word. Be still and know that I am God. This one verse I want to say and conclude. Be still. 46 and 10. God wants me to tell this verse to you. My children, my child, congregation. Be still and know that I am God. The other translation says, be quiet, be quiet. The other translation stay, says, stop your striving, stop your striving. These three things, be still, be quiet, stop your striving. My God will be exalted among the heathens. My God will be exalted in the earth. Be still and know that I am God.